In this presentation, we will calculate the cost per equivalent unit using the weighted average method. In a prior presentation, we used this example data for our problem to compute the equivalent units of production. So we had the equivalent units of production calculated last time. We have the units completed and transferred out of the department in June, the work in process at the end of the month, and then equivalent units of production in the department during June, that with regard to materials and conversion. These are the units that we're considering now. Now we want to think about the dollar amounts. We need to think about the dollar amounts. These are going to be given within the problem as well. Notice we would know the dollar amounts. What we need to know is how to allocate those dollar amounts between the amounts that are still in the work in process and the amounts that have been transferred out of the department. That's what we're trying to consider. In order to do that, we're going to use the units. We're going to consider the units here that we've now broken out to the units completed and transferred and the work in process that's still in at the end of the time period. We're then going to use an estimate to get the cost per equivalent unit so that we can then uh, apply out the costs to the amount that's still in work in process and the amount that has been transferred out. So now we, we got to consider the dollar amounts and we'll use dollar signs within Excel as we consider the dollar amounts. So we're going to start with the work in process in June 1st. Now We'll start with the materials over here and we're going to pull this amount from the table. So this is given from the table. This is known from the prior time period. So the prior time period, we had the 6731 for materials and then we had the conversion. So the conversion, we're going to pull from the table from the prior time period, the 4312. So that's the 4312. If we sum those up, if I add these two up, it adds up to 11,043. We'll use the sum function to do that. So I'm just going to sum these up and the total then the work in process at the beginning of the month, the amount that you could consider or think about in a T account or the GL account or the trial balance 1143 and then costs that were added during the time period cost added. We're going to say these are going to increase. We're just going to pull these from the table again. We know what they are because they're the actual costs. We don't know where to apply them to. That's what we're trying to do. So the costs that are added are the uh, 134.83 for the cost added in materials and the cost added related to conversion then and is going to be that 89.243. Re remember, we know what materials are. Conversion is the, is the labor and the overhead. And so that's going to give us the total. So we're going to say, all right, that's the total costs. And we'll just sum that up. So I'm going to add up first the costs added, which is going to be these two items, uh, 219, 726. So we'll use the equals SUM sum of those items, and then we'll add them up vertically. So we've got the uh, 230, 769. So I'm going to sum these up. And then I could copy that across or just sum up across, right? We're just summing all this up. So here's the total total costs materials conversion and the total these two of course 23769 adds up to that 23769 now we want to consider the equivalent units so equivalent units and so the equivalent units remember we calculated up top so we have the equivalent units that we calculated here the total units we broke them out but now we're going to consider the total so that we can then use this number the cost per equivalent unit to break out for these totals which we'll do next time so, so we're going to say all right the equivalent units not for the total is going to be <laughs> this number for the materials and this number for the conversion that's what we've calculated last time this wasn't given in the problem but we calculated it in the last presentation and that's going to give us our cost per equivalent unit and this is going to be a division problem so we're going to say all right here's the dollar amount 137214 for materials divided by the 6534 that's 21 and then the 93555 divided by the 6237 is the 15. So we'll divide those out. This equals this number divided by this number. The dollar amount divided by the units gives us the dollar amount per unit. So notice this is all dollars. This is the units dollar amount per unit. So then we're going to say, all right, this is the 93555 divided by the 6237. 15. Now notice we're in Excel and these happen to be perfectly rounded. So we don't need pennies in this example by design, but obviously it wouldn't always be perfectly rounded and you have to, you'll have to deal with rounding. So just be careful 
if you're dealing with a problem that deals with rounding. So now we've got the cost uh, per equivalent unit, and we can use this number now to apply out to the to the areas that we're concerned with because we know we we now have the total. We want to break out between the units uh, completed and transferred out of the department, the amounts that's not in our department anymore in terms of dollars. So we're going to use the units times the dollars to get that and the amount that's still there at the end of the time period. And that's what we'll do next time when we assign the costs to units to then assign out the costs that are still in our department, the costs that should be transferred out to the next department.